Hello and welcome. This is NTA Tuesday Live and I'm Cyril Stober. Nigeria's quest for sustainable development, peace and building ethical values has been of paramount concern to governments, an interest strongly shared by a Turkish non-governmental organization, Hizmet Movement, which places importance in sustainable development and imperatives of peace, education, dialogue and charity in Nigeria. The movement, which began in Nigeria in the 1960s, has made commendable contributions to the nation's socio-economic life, particularly focusing on education, health, charity, and dialogue, which it believes are the remedies for poverty, disunity, and underdevelopment. The movement has affiliated institutions that include the Nigerian Turkish Nile University Abuja, Nizami Hospital, and Turkish international colleges across the Federation, which are secular and guided by high ethical standards and excellent service above profit-making. Now, the Financial Times reported last year that there are thousands of schools in 140 countries affiliated to Hizmet Movement and also business confederations. Now, have the activities of Hizmet Movement made bearings on the campaigns to restore lost values, especially among the youth? Does it also support the fight against corruption now, why are there perceived reservations about the Hizmet movement in certain quarters? And what lessons for Nigerians from Hizmet movement's home of origin, Turkey? Now, we'll ask some of these questions and seek answers to them. Right. Now, we've seen, you know, Turkish organizations and uh, uh, Turkish interests move around the world, and um, especially in the fields of education and health. Now, uh, Prof, you belong to one of such organizations and uh, what is the driving force behind this? Mm, I, I, I think the driving force behind, let me say the motivation behind the things that the organization is doing has to do with the attempt to eradicate poverty, ignorance and what they want to call lack of conflict. So they want to bring people together to, to talk and to relate so that there could be peace. And this thread actually runs through everything that the institution does. Uh, the institution, uh, it's a multicultural environment. We have students from, from a lot from Turkey, from Nigeria, from around Africa and, and all over the world. And then we also have faculty members from around the world. And so it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a model for living together. And uh, I, I do believe that education has been very close to this, the, the group's uh, uh, intentions. The, uh, the, the group has laid a lot of emphasis on education. They have more than 140 uh, schools across uh -huh. the world. In Nigeria, we have the, the, there are about 18, about 18 uh, secondary schools and one university. Now we are the first beneficiary of a university in Africa. And the university, I can tell you, is one of the best that we have around now in terms of equipment, in terms of environment. We're doing uh, most of the engineering courses, uh, management courses, art courses, law, medicine is starting, and coupled with the Nizamiya Hospital, the Nigeria Turkish Nizamiya Hospital which I consider one of the best in the country now because I had a recent experience in the in Zamiya Hospital. So I, I think the real driving force, the motivation for the things they're doing is this pursuit of excellence in education, in eradicating poverty, and in getting people to live together. Dr. Khalid Ali, most people would ordinarily would think um, when organizations and movements spread across the world, uh, economic interests are paramount. And here we have an organization that says um, profit making is not the primary motive. Well, uh, this is a very important question. Looking at the founder of the Hizmet movement, uh, Mr. Fethullah Gulen, when you look at his own philosophy, it's about the improvement of the quality of morality attitude, the building of man to be upright, to be useful to himself, to the general society. His philosophy is about an individual 
who is an embodiment of peace, knowledge, light, humanity, and good spirit in terms of uh, dealings with other human beings. He has authored a lot of works which have to do with the disciple, disciples kind of philosophy of taking somebody through a kind of spiritual retreat to, in making a person uh, a non-violent, peaceful, loving, caring person. When you look at Fethullah Gulen himself, with these dozens of world publications, the royalties he gets is taken back for the service of humanity. He, lived, he lives in just two-bedroom flat elsewhere, in somewhere in America. <laughs> and that uh, all is about humanity. He serves himself and he does it himself. That is why it is called hizmet. It's an Arabic word, khidma, meaning service, serving the people. And taken from a very important uh, prophetic saying that the leader of people is he who serves them. I think whatever it is in terms of um, these institutions, all the proceeds go back to the service of humanity. And it's evident. The well, the dig, the hospitals, the books, the scholarships, and so on and so forth. All right. Thank you so much. Um, mm. I like the terms of use, service to humanity, caring, mm. uh, educating, mm. building social values, yes. and uh, producing qualitative individuals. Now let's come to uh, uh, Sister Anola, giving you a calling and looking at today's realities. All these have been provided or propagated, and yet in a non-secular way. Does that surprise you that you still have non-secular organizations that can still do this, especially given the current realities we have in many parts of the world and particularly in Nigeria today? Yes, I think that's actually the beauty of Ismet movement because unfortunately religion is being associated with negative things nowadays. Mm. Um, many people are actually kicking against religion because they blame religion for some of the issues, the problems we have today. Our dialogue is not just about talk. It's about seeking together the good of all. The values to save humanity, to help through education, through health, qualitative health. So we know that we are not seeking that uh, we, we, I make you Christian or you make me Muslim. It's more for us to work for the good of all, for a peaceful coexistence in a society where everybody feels at home, everybody feels welcome. And I think uh, Ismet movement represents this for Islam in a very beautiful way. Knowledge ordinarily should help to improve the individual and its outlook towards life. But people are wondering that even educational institutions now providing knowledge, people have taken the knowledge and twisted it in such a way as to now not be um, improved characters they're meant to be, uh, but um, to become the agents of uh, divisive tendencies. Yeah, you're right. Uh, one of the things the we do at the Nigeria Turkish Nile University is to see ourselves, we, we don't really see ourselves as a, a faith-based school. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves as a value-based school. Uh, there are things we don't expect you to do. There are things we don't, and those are the values we used to cherish in those days. We don't expect you to steal. We don't expect you to dress improperly. We don't expect you to insult another person. We don't expect you to oppress another religion or another person of a different faith. So uh, these values are the things that I think the schools and the, 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 the knowledge-based institutions should actually be offering. But unfortunately, as it's the case with every aspect of our Nigerian life, uh, things, uh, interest of people have permeated 
the universities, the secondary schools, the primary schools, and we've been divided. In fact, it was the same question we put to Dr. Khalid Ali because, um, I mean, you, <laughs> you are on both sides. Um, as an academic and, uh, again, as, a, if you like, a cleric, as a chief imam of a mosque, and uh, you see this happening all the, <laughs> all the time. You're also of the Department of Philosophy. Well, uh, I think the Nigerian fact must have to be taken into consideration. Um, quite unfortunately, Nigerians, I used to say, are special species of creation. We look like other people, but we're not the same. Mm -hmm. Things that ordinarily are just open are clear for you to do, then the Nigerian factor comes into being. And I think uh, the religious institutions, or whichever institutions, are not an island in themselves, but they are supposed to be looked within the wider society. When you look at the UFO dialogue, and it is just about humanity. It is about having the space, the opportunity to talk together. It doesn't matter who you are, but the, the, the bottom line is that we have to talk. And we have to do it in, 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 in an aroma, an arena of peace, love, and care. When you look at the new threat, establishing institutions and bringing people, trying to really rekindle and a kind of give a rebirth to the, these values. Therefore, in this country, that is why today one of the headaches the president is going through is about the dwindling values of the individual in the society. Well, the institutions are supposed to shape in addition to imparting knowledge, shape the character of for those who have the opportunity to go through those institutions. And um, how would you say the Hizmet movement, for instance, is gaining confidence, especially using the vehicle of the educational institutions in molding character in addition to imparting knowledge? Okay. Uh, like, like I said, the well, I've, I've had the opportunity to, uh, to travel to Turkey and uh, to interact with some uh, members of the movement. And I've also read a lot about Fethullah Gulen, about what he believes in. And I've said that given the schools, I've observed, uh, I'm involved with the Turkish National University, and I've observed the Nigeria Turkish International Colleges. And one, one, kev one thing that happened is that character actually, for me, character actually should come before knowledge. Because character is much more important than knowledge. You cannot get anywhere. You cannot get anywhere if you don't have character. With all the knowledge in the world, without character, you cannot get anywhere. And Ismail movement, it, it's the main focus, first and foremost, is character. Of course, we give certificate out and say you, you, you've been found worthy of character and knowledge before you get the certificate. But it's not just in the certificate. It is in everything that we do. If we find if, and, and this, is the, 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 this is the message the, the movement preaches, if you find that you cheat in an, in an exam, mm. it's complete zero tolerance. If you steal, if you misbehave within the hostel, you are deported immediately. So this, if you, you, we don't have to tell our people to dress well. It just, uh, that I have observed, and I don't get this in many other places. You don't have to tell anybody to dress well. They dress well. This movement did not actually start in 140 countries at the same time. They actually started very small. And how? They started to provide shelters, dormitories mm -hmm. for people. After a while, the provision of dormitories where people go to school in other places, they find dormitory to stay. They, they extended that to provision of schools. And so these schools, now people go through these schools and university came, they go through the university and they are really obliged to want to give back to the system. 
we are talking about elites. These guys are elites. Some of them are professors. Mm -hmm. Some of them are doctors. Mm -hmm. Can we say a doctor is not an elite? Oh, but yes. he is. He is an elite. But the manner in which they carry their own elites right. now comes to volunteerism. I've traveled with quite a number of them. And I find out that we all travel economy. They don't travel business class. Unfortunately for us, if you enter British Airways and you are going to your economy side, for those of us who are used to economy, you find children who have never done anything in their lives sitting in first class and business class. So this is where we need to learn these good things. You, you can go to private school and be of good character. This is what, yeah, this is the example this, the His My Movement is bringing, and we ought to copy it. Mm. Right. Mm. Given back. Mm. And uh, I like that because it's said that most, most, well, not all, but most of the elites in Nigeria hardly ever give back to society. Yes, unfortunately, because being an elite makes you, makes you feel exclusive. That is the definition in Nigeria. Mm that you are so important, your outlook, your environment, your community, your attitude and relationship with other people. Rather than that being in that of support and help, is that of contempt and disdain. Mm. And looking, even beating oh, the, 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 the finger that fed you. Just an elite today, maybe since Sisi's old father has, has as, as, as an illiterate, an illiterate who has thought of sending you to school. I think that thinking, that thought that had really made you what you are today, is not useless. So an elite, elitist kind of attitude in this country makes you feel that you are already a super human being mm -hmm. and you don't give back what you have been given to become what you are. And I think this is the lesson which his made movements wants to teach. That I've gotten to from from, from the community. Now it is the my own turn to give back to the community. To the community. Yes, at, at the end of the day the issue is not so much equality because we cannot all be equal. Right. You know, it's about equity. Mm. Any society where there is a huge gap between people who have and those who don't have mm. is always in trouble. Yeah. Whether it is America, whether it is UK, what if there is this huge gap? Gap, and I mean this is not a a, an issue of uh, of ideology. It's a question of of practicality. Yeah. Because if I mean if I have I have a huge house now, and Acro right across the other side, there is a slum. I live in fear of those guys coming. Oh, yeah. So I have to build <laughs> tall walls. I have to employ them. So at the end of the day, it doesn't make sense. You electrify the fence. So, but <laughs> if there is <laughs> electrify it, but if there is equity, I mean, in those days, in my in my in my primary school days, we were all in the same class. People, and I mean, everybody knew it was probably the richest. Nigeria, certainly among the richest Nigerians in those days, his children, grandchildren were all in the same class, emirs, whatever, who all ate the same food, you know, were all taught by the same teachers and so on and so forth. So that level of equi equity, when it's there, you know, so that by the time you are growing up, you know that you don't feel like, you know, y creature, your own creature comfort is the most important th thing first. What Dr. Adetrino talked about, you know, you know that you have to give back. So that means you have to make sacrifices so that, you know, society will be better. But if you feel because I'm elite, therefore, my creature comfort takes precedence over everything else. As we've seen, you know, legislatures, they are more concerned about the cars they will be riding. Mm. You know, th this is the kind of thing that will always bring trouble to society. Mm. So as we begin to wind down, what are the basic lessons that we can learn from the example of Hizmet in spreading across a number of countries and providing these services? 
Um, the first thing I think uh, I would take, I shared with them, which I resisted at the initial stage was tolerance. Mm. I said, no, I don't want to be tolerated. I want to be accepted. But after the recent experiences in Nigeria, I see the point of tolerance. Because when we are all so different, there is definitely, there are things I don't like about the other. There are things that, given my specific upbringing, background, culture, maybe level of education, I would outright wish to condemn it and not accept it. Tolerance might enable me to hold on until I understand it. While I explore the possibility, time is gone, I've seen some very concrete experiences of things that we didn't understand, so we condemned it. So when I'm giving myself a bit of that uncomfortable space in me so that I can let in another person, listen to that person, get the perspective of that person, then I might accept the person much better. I think that is one of the first things that all of us in Nigeria, based on ethnic differences, based on religious differences, based on now class differences, because a, a girl is, is in trouble. I say, oh, she puts herself into that trouble. But do I know the story of that girl? So the level of tolerance allows me to go with interest, with openness to the other. And then I can accept that person. I can listen to that person. And that is one big thing I think Ismail Movement is working through and we can learn a lot from. All right. Dr. Khalid. Well, I think there are two important values which are worthy of emulation from the Ismail Movement. Sacrifice and humility. Sacrifice for the for, for, for others. You see these volunteers, as they are called, with their professional backgrounds, wind hand to produce wealth that is now taken back to the less privileged. Mm. Sacrifice. And I did say in the beginning of this program that their humility and humbleness is something that is really very inspiring. And being really humble, simple, affable, and being kind-hearted to a fault, as it is being said, these are very important values worthy of emulation from this movement. And that can be seen depicted in the personality of Mr. Fatula Hulen and then his disciples. Thank you very much for you. For me, the realization that we have come into this world with nothing and that we will go back with nothing, mm. I think that the, the lessons is to give, just like it's been said, give, give, give. Give of yourself by giving service to other people. Give of, if you have some surplus, give back to the society. Mm. That's what they're doing. If you have knowledge, give a little back to teach some who are not so fortunate. So I think I will just put it down to, to learn from the Hisman moment, the lesson of giving. All right. And for you, sir? Well, for me, it's simply, you know, the, the lesson of teaching by what you do, not by what you preach. Uh, from the little I've known about the Hisman movement, I don't know that much, but I can see this is you know, they emphasize that, you know, teach people by what you do, not by what you say. And, mm. you know, of course, they've invested, and that's another uh, takeaway from them, massively in education. Right. Mm. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, We'll just round off with this one tweet, this last one. It came in from one of our viewers, O.C. Inkimakulam. And... Uh, He's referring to the panels we've had today, and he says, uh, it's been nice being part of this show. Guess you had the best panelists today. My regards to them. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And uh, it's on that note, we'll say thank you very much to our guests, Mala Muhammad Haruna. We well, thank you for coming. Thank uh, you. Associate Professor Stephen Adeshino, thank you for being thank here. So and uh, Dr. Khalid Abu Bakr Aliu, it's interesting having you. Uh, yes, thank we've, you. we've been with you for right. a number of times. And thank it's you. good to see you again. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Reverend Sister Anne Falola. Ola, thank you very much from the Catholic Secretariat. Thank you thank for your thoughts. You. And to all of you who are part of this program, we thank you for being part of it. Next week, we'll reach you again on NTA Tuesday Live. I'm Cyril Stover. Bye for now.